the book, Legenda. Legenda, in, in 1890, a, a Masonic temple was built in Austin, Texas. It had a footing poured eight feet by eight feet by eight feet to support a 44-foot chimney. Well, back in 18... That no, was in 1890. It was 18, 1860. 1860, they built that Masonic temple. And it was a, a, a three-story building. And what the man did is he took legenda, dogma, and the Masonic codes from 1851 and 1859, all written on original cotton paper. And he wrapped them in, in paper and dipped them in beeswax, sealing them in beeswax. Then he put a two-inch plaster Paris case around it in a wood box. Then he dipped that in beeswax and did it, repeated the process three times. Henceforth, producing a time capsule that was sealed. That sealed time capsule was then put into an eight by eight by eight foot concrete footing at the, at the base of this lo uh, Masonic lodge to support the chimney. The chief of the Apache nation in Arizona was working under contract in Texas, West Texas. And, or rather, in, in Austin, but he, he was from West Texas, but he was working in Austin. I was doing a seminar in Dallas at that weekend on Sunday. And his job was to take a four-foot wrecking ball, and, and they had dug, dug out this footing and break this punk of concrete up because it was too big to move. And when he hit it with the ball, out pops this chest, and he figures, ah, a treasure, but it was a time capsule. Well, when he, he opened it up, chopped it open, he found all these books inside. And the books were in, in pristine condition after 140 years. And he opened them up and it says, property of David Wynn Miller, punctuated. So he throws them in a paper bag, drives 260 miles to where I was, and he walks into my seminar at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon in a in a, with a grocery bag and he walks up to me and I, I knew the man he, I was a chief in his own Indian nation because I broke the treaties with the United States Department of Interior and got the Apache Nation to put in casinos back between, 1890, uh, between 1995 and 1999. In 1995, there were 92% of all American Indians were on welfare. In 1999, all American Indians were off of welfare. And there's 190 casinos in the United States now in Indian territories. And all treaties have been broken with the Department of Interior because of my syntaxing. So they made me a chief in 14 of the major Indian tribes in the United States. With that said, he calls me a white lighter, for those that understand what that means, and uh, uh, brought me this bag, and he comes in there and he says, Dave, uh, I, I, I have these books. Do you know where he came from? I says, yeah, and I told him. And he says, they have your name in them. And he says, yeah, I know, they're mine. And he gives them to me and he leaves. Simple as that. And no, I'm not going to answer any more questions on that topic. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, curiosity goes forever. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, ask me your questions. <laughs> the, uh, we'll go back over here again. When we, when, we dis when, we, when we disqualified the preposition as being no position, the article being a, a word of no contract, which gave you a no-no, we now realize that they had mistaught all of us what prepositional phrases were. And so we had, in, in 2000, 2nd of January 2000, we again came out with the position lodial fact phrase. We also brought in past time and future time. A 1922 book, maybe Reader, it was a 1922 Reader from the Depression. I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. And, and a lady by the name of Joy brought me this book and says, read page nine. I read page nine and it says, to future time, from past time. I'm going like, oh my God. All my technology from 1995 published to 2000 was written with the word to and from. As you know, a sentence can only exist with one idea. I'm going to the store from the house. Two different time zones. 
the sentence is, uh, is wrong because there's two different times. The future doesn't exist and the past has no damage. So therefore, we dropped all future and past and it took me three months to rewrite my program, removing all the prepositional facts, bringing everything into now time. Present time, PRE means no sent, which is contract. So you had three choices, the past, the present, and the future, all meaning no contract. So we had to go to now time. So we created the now time, and then we, the conjunction, and and or, and is a command, and or is a, is an option. Do you know that that, that lesson cost me $1,600 to learn what and and or meant? I had a real estate company, I told you, for 26 years, and I evicted one of my tenants. Uh, it was a December before Christmas. It said, quit and pay rent. And the judge was ready to sign it, and the clerk goes, you can't sign that. He says, why not? He says, because he gave you a command. He commanded the people to quit and get out. He says, you only have jurisdiction if there's an option, judge. This is the clerk telling the judge. It must say quit or pay rent. Now, if the or doesn't act within a given amount of time, which is 10-day notice, then the judge can sign an order for the sheriff's department to go out and evict the individual. He says, that's right. This is wrong because you used and instead of or. Start over. 45 days later, get a court date. 45 days after that for eviction. That's 90 days. Got to stay in my house for three more months, not paying rent. Cost me 1600 bucks because they used and an R. Anybody seen the movie Slumdog Millionaire? You haven't seen the movie Slumdog? I, I, I strongly recommend won the Academy Award that year. Rent it at the video store and watch it. It's a story about a boy from the age of 6 to 18 in India. It was made in India, filmed in India, and he got on a game show. It's a true story. And in this game show, he answered every question correct to win 1 million rubles, or 1 million US, which was 20 million in rubles. And what's unique about it is every question that was asked now flashes back to his position in life, that he lived the experience. He knew the correct answer because he was there and lived it. And that's what's unique. And he won the money, and he became a hero throughout India, won an Academy Award, and he's done like, like maybe 10 more movies since then where they've all been really, really great movies. I mean, this is five-star quality. When I heard it, people told me to go see it. What well, I want to see a movie from India. Well, I've seen it four times now. It's probably one of the best foreign movies I've ever witnessed and for acting, quality, and, and, uh, and it's a true story. Myself, I'm the same way. I have been in court, I have written the lawsuits, I have made the mistakes. I've been through all these stupid things, all the landmines that you can step on, I stepped on and survived to stand up here and say, don't go there, don't do it. When I write a lawsuit for you in quantum grammar under the document, contract, federal, postal, vessel, because paper is a vessel, federal court venue, don't go into the United States District Court and talk to these people. They are a fiction. They are a foreign vessel. You are not in Indiana. You are in the Indiana Territory. Stay in your territory. In 48 days, we will file a fault judgment because if they don't sign the contract, I have a contract to dock my correct vessel as the correct court, as the correct judge, and the clerk of the court now becomes the correct judge. In the event that clerk will not sign the correct document and be part of that, it goes to the U.S. Attorney's Office, Goes, excuse me, goes to the Attorney General's office, who then will prosecute the case under the False Claims Act for forensic evidence. You'll get your money, then it goes to your labor, goes to Tyrone Williams in Arkansas, who is working with the Attorney General and the IRS as our collection agency, because they want their million and a half dollars for every lawsuit I write. And we'll get payout next week on these. So. Uh, this is a real thing that's really happening, and we have cooperation from over 1,000 attorney generals across the United States, both attorneys and assistants. Yes? Did I hear you say next week? Yeah, they were, I was told last week, Monday, that we got 10 days till payout, which is next week. So. 
If yours went in before March 6, you'd be in that, that group. Okay. The ones that we filed were dated for the last three and a half years, which were settled on March 6, uh, 2012 in California. And those are the groups that are being paid out right now. And there's, they have a continuous rotation now that each one of the quantum cases that comes in is a signed confession. The banks already confessed that these are legitimate, so they will be paid as fast as they come in or, or negotiated. Yes? Your corporation number was sent on your fault judgment. It's already been filed for you. I did it. Everybody that has cases in here with me, your cases have already been filed, registered mail. I have your serial numbers. They're in my book. If you don't have a copy of it, I mean, if you physically do not have a copy of it, I have it stuck in my book. Okay, but yeah, ours was blank. Right, okay. but you would fill those in after the fact. But I have copies of those already, and they're registered. Okay. So, yes. So back to mortgages, it doesn't matter what state you're in? Or what All 50 states are the same. All 64 million mortgages in the United States were set up by the banking industry to be a fraud, established in 1934 to be harvested. When the, end of, when the year of Jubilee ended, the anywhere from six to nine page documents that were used prior to that were all null and void. And in the 2nd of January, no, 2nd of February 2000, a new contract was issued by the United States Department of Housing and bankers uh, under the, from the post office and was standardized throughout the United States. There are variables between private investors and the industry and the National Banking Association. There's a slight variables. They had to file, follow the same criterias, but I have 38 different copies of banks that I've done. So what's, what's happening is I've syntaxed all of the 38 different mortgages. They take about 40 hours a piece to, to syntax. And then I just, I match them up to make sure that everything is, and it's already been recertified by college professors and university professors and U.S. attorney's offices all over the United States as this guy knows what he's doing. This is a math procedure. This thing cannot be defeated. It's been tested in, in 150 languages in every country of the world. It's been proven to be an original program from A to Z. The website, my books, all original, no plagiarizing. I know of three people that tried to plagiarize and charge people $1,500 to come to a seminar to to mimic my website, talk about the videos on my website, and then sell postal badges to people for $2,200, thinking they wouldn't have to pay taxes. Uh, within, I would say, eight to 12 hours, upon doing a seminar for this, the FBI was notified because my students are always watching. Uh, and my students are everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean that literally. And it's, it's almost impossible to get through a gauntlet without bumping into one of my students someplace who's going to immediately pick up the phone and say, hey, Dave, we got a guy here that's identified himself to be you or plagiarizing you. And because you call me on this cell phone, my cell phone, you're talking to the FBI. Anybody calls me on this cell phone, you want to talk to a judge, just call me on a cell phone. The FBI will record it, immediately transmit it within a few minutes to, a to the federal judge responsible in that case, and he will be brought up to speed that I've been notified that now he is on my list of uh, people to pay attention to. And uh, you might go to court the next morning and find out your case has been vacated, that you're not going to jail for whatever reason you went to court for, and it's hands off. Get away from this thing as fast as possible. We have too many People that don't know what's going on to harvest, it'll be nice and easy, but if you touch this guy, you touch his students, he's gonna drop a nickel on you and you're gonna have a problem, yeah. Okay, I have another area of concern. When, I don't know if you recall this or not, I, I had uh, originally when you did the suit for me regarding 
regarding the charges in the local court. I didn't file it in the district court original. I just went and filed a document in the, and then you had told me that I could just copy that. Yeah, you can file that. That, course, that, clay, that case is clean. It's a federal case. Okay. Oh, no, that you have to do. You have to put a new stamp on any new thing. Do not photocopy postage stamps. Postage stamps are legal money. You get copy, you get, you get caught photocopying postage stamps. That's counterfeiting. That's serious. So don't, don't do that, please. Just for your own public, for your, for your safety, because then you're going to be the, the government makes photocopies and they keep it electronically held in the computer, but that's Title 18, Section 1343, mail fraud, wire fraud, to copy a lawsuit and put it into a computer. They have to maintain my lawsuits bonded together as a hard copy paper in the judge's, chief judge's vault. It's not even allowed to be filed in the record room. You can go file and come back tomorrow and say, we don't know who you are, you, didn't, you weren't here. That's because the chief judge has it, and they assign a new case number. They take and they put a, another United States District Court paper over our heading, and they photocopy it into the computer so if anybody comes looking, which would be an attorney or a judge or a lawyer, that they're only going to see the United States District Court bringing you into their fiction under a brand new case number. Don't touch it. It's not your name. It's not your case number. It's not your venue. It's not your grammar. You've got 48 days. They don't do it right. We sue them for fault. Done deal. Attorney General takes it because they're getting $20 million, $20 million a pop off of these pocket money. So they're not playing games. They're going after the people, after the fact. And all of a sudden, like, that judge, all of a sudden, he don't work here anymore. Where'd he go? They don't want to advertise that judges can be prosecuted or are going to disappear into the woodwork because of false and misleading statements because they don't want the criminals, the real criminals, the drug dealers, the bank robbers, the murderers to know how to get out of trouble. Okay, we don't, I don't do those. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you have made a comment earlier, when we get these stamps, when we file the claim, yeah. we're supposed to sign it right. over the stamp? Sign we'll use your autograph, yes. Well, I did it. If you, I'm the I'm the federal judge on your case, so I have the authority on there. But as far as your personally, you should autograph that stamp, making you a postmaster, banker, and judge of your own claim, to bring it to the attention. So whatever documents you still are in possession of at home, sign, autograph those. Fingerprint is a notary. Do not go to a notary. That's a fiction. Use your index finger or your thumb. And that is your notary on your autograph, like what you've got there. Oh, across their stamp? Yeah. Oh, whether you do or don't, uh, that isn't going to change your authority. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, as long as you signed your postage stamp there, that's the legal one. Okay. Because uh, that's not a that's not a uh, an imitation. I, I, sign, I sign that stamp because I'm a federal judge, okay. and I, I'll walk in there and say, hey, I signed your stamp. I'm a federal judge here, same as I am on my vessel. Right. So I can trump their ability to move paper from one jurisdiction to another. Question? When we sign across the file here, do we have to take our ink in and I do. I just, well, you see when you're in front of the clerk, she doesn't have a stamp or don't have a stamp pad. We carry stamp pads when I go to court. If nothing else, lick your finger and do it. You got DNA, fingerprint, and autograph. That's a triple certification. Okay, that's another thing. One is an opinion, folks. So if one of you stands up and says something, it's an opinion. Two is a certification. Now you got to be certified. That's legal. Three is an authorization. That gets to move things. Four more is a class action. You need 16 or more to bring attention to the Attorney General, which we have, I think we've got over 16 cases now in Indiana. So the Indiana State Attorney General can get involved. Right now, Kamala Harris in California is the Attorney General that is working with the 
because uh, she's got over 100 of these now. And so they were able to use a class action and go to the, go to the different banks and say, here's all the lawsuits, the syntaxing on every one of them is identical. They may be 38 different banks, but, and the sentences may be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and they may have moved the sentences around, but all the same sentences appear someplace with that exact phraseology. And when you do an overlay of the whole thing, we account for 99% of everyone to be identical, but the modification of the grammar with the math codes, you can flip these things and read 300 words a second, and in 15 seconds go through a 15-page document and say, this has got 5,000 mistakes on it, and that isn't a mistake. That's not a misspelled word, that's engineered. And in two places of the document, it says, false and misleading statements is a criminal penalty, and a misspelled word doesn't change the, change the document. There are no misspelled words. The syntax is wrong in all 5,000 words. <laughs> it's engineered. It's not a mistake. Now, there's a thing called the McNaughton rule. That's M apostrophe N. McNaughton. N-A-G, I think that's how it's spelled. It's the very first word under the letter M in Black's Law Dictionary, 4th, 5th, and 6th, 7th, and 8th editions. It doesn't appear before that because the McNaughton Rule came out in 1966, and Black's 4th edition was published in 1968. That's why it's in the 4th. If you've got anything earlier, it won't show up. Okay, what is the McNaughton rule? It's called a right-wrong rule. The right-wrong rule means if you have knowledge of a lie, perjury, false and misleading statements, or fictitious conveyance of grammar, and you do it, that means you're guilty. If you don't know you've done it, then you can't be held liable for it. Like a police officer standing up and saying, I saw you go through a stop sign. But the way he said it, the grammar was wrong. So he doesn't understand syntax because he was never trained in it. But the fact that you went through a stop sign, if you can make an argument of physics, two objects can't occupy the same space, it'll get thrown out. But if you said he, you failed to stop for a sign, and then you, you just, you rolled past the sign, or you rolled through the intersection without stopping using the correct grammar, then you'd be found guilty, okay? In it because it, he's a professional witness. And after all, you would be in a fiction court, and 99.99% .99 of the people wouldn't even know they're being hoodwinked by syntax in the first place if you didn't know how to speak in the correct format. So the McNaughton rule, the judge stands up and says, and Banks stood up and said, for three and a half years, I don't know anything about this. I, the lawyers wrote this for us. The lawyers work for the corporate. The corporate is a machine. The machine says, we're looking for a person. A person, a person is a corporation. We're looking for a human being. We're looking for a thinking person. The thinking person doesn't exist. So what do we do have? We have a corporation with a signed confession because this corporation stood up and said, I'm responsible for this, give me the house. And then I have a signed confession for, for false misleading statements and I can do my job and you can get paid. Pretty simple. And when they, under the, under the McNaughton rule, they did this a few times and they got away with it. And then I said to them, you know, doing something 6,000 times to perfection is not a misspelled word. That's a perfection of engineering and you can't stand up and say you did something 6,000 times and didn't understand what you were doing. That ain't gonna wash with any jury. <laughs> and I got my conviction, they confessed, and we've already picked up $140 billion in damages since March 6th, just to show you how effective I am. The judgments on my technology are the biggest in recorded history anywhere on the planet. And I'm the cash cow for the bank, for the government, for the post office, and for the people. Everybody likes me. Even the criminals love me because they're going like, if I get into trouble, I'm gonna call Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody bothers me. I'll tell you a cute story once. I got out, this was back about 10 years ago. I got out of uh, 